Lovely good evening, Zambia, good evening, Africa, and warm welcome to the finest program live on movie television from Zambia's capital city, Lusaka. My name is Innocent Piri, and of course, you can simply call me IP. Today is the December 10th, the year 2020. Remember, a few weeks before we say our goodbye to the year 2020, one of the years that has been very difficult to most of you and most of us Zambians. We hope for the best come next year, 2021. This is The Furnace with me, Innocent Piri. Of course, you can simply call me IP, as I said earlier on. Now, on Monday of this week, the Constitutional Court pronounced its final decision on the 63 former cabinet ministers who illegally stayed in office in 2016 prior to the 20, 2016 general elections. This was after a contentious debate on whether or not it was in order for ministers to remain in offices during campaigns, contrary to the Zambian Constitution under Article 8081. It was shortly after that that Republican President Edgar Lungu was quick to call for a press briefing at State House to give his own legal interpretation on what the Constitution says. Tonight we discuss lessons learned behind this episode and we find out if at all really our parliamentarians are able to understand the laws they are making on our behalf. My guest on the program is Kalomo Central Member of Parliament, that's Honorable Harry Kamboni. He makes an appearance on my program, The Furnace. Honorable, welcome to my program. Thank you very much, Innocent. How right. Sure. How is uh, Kalomo Central? Kalomo is which? It's fine. We have water now, at least. Fantastic. Yeah. So right. It's been quite long since you visited at, at Movie TV. Yes, yeah? yes, because you will come once again. Thank you very much. We have <laughs> hardly been in Lusaka because of doing Parliament virtually. So yeah, we have mainly been to the Parliament. I mean, to the constituencies. So. Right. Yeah. And so. uh, you closed. We've closed today. Right. Yeah. Sure. Let's begin on this uh, note. Uh, on, a, on, on a very you know uh, sad note, I should make mention that we are. Back on the same debate we had some five years ago or four years ago about the former cabinet ministers that really uh, insisted that at that moment it was in order for them to remain in office. When the constitution is clear, parliament shall dissolve at least 90 days before the general elections. Something in the history of Zambia, very strange, happened to our country four years ago. Tell us why do you start your commenting on this issue, Honorable, when you, you, you heard on Monday when the Con Court passed its own judgment on that? You see, innocent, hmm. uh, there are lessons to learn. No one is above law. Right. And the ignorance is not an excuse when it comes to law. Hmm. So you can't say, I was told, hmm. therefore, my boss told me, therefore, it's right. I mean, if my boss tells me to kill somebody, hmm and I go ahead and kill somebody, I'll be jailed. Because what he has told me to do is wrong. It's my duty to say, no, I can't do this because it's against the law. And these are lessons to learn. The problem that uh, we find in PF is that for some people to think that they are above law, they are above this world. They were told innocent. You people from the TV stations told them they wouldn't listen. OK? Lars, a group of lawyers, top lawyers in the country, told them they wouldn't listen. The citizens cried foul, they wouldn't listen. In fact, by virtue of this judgment, it means all these MPs and ministers went into an election illegally. They were using government machinery, which is totally against the law. Because they were going with their cars and flags, using them to campaign when they shouldn't have done so. So even all their elections, their, their winning should have been nullified in a serious democracy, you see? And that's one of the reasons in the petition that uh, was put that those people went into campaign I, 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 using government vehicles, which is totally wrong. Only the vice president and the president are allowed because of the security concerns. The rest, they are not. So you can see, they knew very well. Lars talked. Zambian citizens talked, media houses talked, they wouldn't listen. And now they want to cry foul. They want us to sympathize with them. In fact, even what we've been told to, 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 to pay is too little. They should have been punished more because they were very arrogant, very arrogant. Is law it? is law, yeah. They were very arrogant. 
Even though they are being told in Parliament, and they were told a long time ago when the judgment was passed, now what has been revealed is just the amount how they are supposed to pay. So they should have actually prepared this a long time ago. So there's no excuse of saying, oh, no, I can't pay because I was told for this one. Who broke the law? It's the people who took the action. So if you tell me to go and do what is wrong, steal a car, and I steal a car, I cannot come back and say, it's you who told me. Because I'm supposed to say I can't do that. So these are some of the things. Even on Bill 10, they were told they never listened. It's the same thing that they're doing now. You know, you come to ECZ, ECZ is breaking the law with impunity. The electoral law is very clear. ECZ does not have powers to cancel the whole register. They only are allowed to delete maybe a candidate for various reasons. They are allowed to, but not the whole register. I, I will get there y as yes. we begin talking yeah. about uh, the voter registration. But I want us to do a match into the uh, former cabinet ministers because, and you brought up something very you know, uh, interesting, very strange um, submission. Why you, 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 you feel it's like you don't, you, you don't sympathize with um, no, you know, I, I don't, the, the I victims. Don't. I don't. You know. If I'm told there's a lion in front of there, everybody's telling me, mm. and I go ahead, and then the lion attacks me. I think it's my problem. Mm. What I'm saying is, Lars, a law association of the country, came out in the open, courted and told them, you're not supposed to. They didn't listen. Other lawyers, non-lawyers, professors, told them the same. They wouldn't listen because they're hungry for money. They don't say anything to do anything that is against the law. And that's what PF has been thriving on, you know, breaking the law throughout. Mm. But it's not good because law will always follow you. And so they should pay. I have no sympathy for them. If they were not warned, yes. But they, were, they received so many warn, warnings. And they, they were arrogant. This judgment was passed a long time ago. They could have cleared. They kept on denying, thinking they are above the law, so they wouldn't pay. Now they have been given 30 days. They should pay. We, we had comments uh, coming from some of those that are not in government today, um, like Mwenyam Senge. We've also had uh, comments from uh, Shimba Kambwili, as well as uh, you know, others saying the president should pay that money on our behalf because he misled us, you know. And uh, really, why can't we put a blame on the president? Because you saw what happened. He's a lawyer and he's a number one citizen that was quick to defend this clause. But, but that's not the way law works. Mm. That's not. It is a moral aspect. Yes, morally, you can say yes. Mm. You know, this was wrong. But those people knew as they went. They are lawmakers. They were told by Lars. They read the law and they decided to disobey it. Even when judgment was passed, they were too arrogant. They didn't want to pay. You see? Because they thought, what, this is what people should learn. Don't think you are above the law because you have been told by the president. If what you have been told is the wrong thing, don't do it. Because you'll be accountable individually. There is that belief that when a boss tells you to do something, mm -hmm. whether it's wrong or right, you should do it. If it is wrong, the law will visit you. The law will visit you. Ignorance is not an excuse. So you cannot say, I was told by this one. No, but you broke the law. But in their case, they were told by everybody. Mm -hmm. TV stations, lawyers, experts, they wouldn't listen. Others believe that uh, there is what we call collective agreement. You know, it would be unfair for maybe 10 people or the cabinet to agree on this issue, you've been instructed by the president, who is your boss, and then you go the contrary way. No. You know. Collective is when you come to voting. Right. You can vote collectively. But before the law, mm. you are responsible as an individual. Right. You can never judge in a group. No. You will answer questions individually. And that's what even God will do in his judgment. Each one will be, will be asked to answer on his own, mm. or on her own. So as an individual, you are accountable supposed to, to answer individually. Mm. So the group does not make something better or right. Simply because it's a majority does not mean that they are right. Mm. No. When it comes to law. And how can lawmakers claim that they don't know? But they were told. So it's just a belief that they are above law. They believe in a certain, they live in a certain world. And that's the mentality that has taken this country down. Mm. Because they have no respect for law. But when you are president over the country, mm. Even before you become an MP, you must first swear in that you will uphold the laws of the country. And that's why you're a lawmaker. Then you become a national leader. The president, the first thing he does 
is to swear in the presence of everybody else. And then you start break, break, you know, breaking or urinating on the same laws that you saw that you would protect and follow to the latter. Where does this put us really as a country? And um, more especially on, on, on you, the parliamentarians. You know, what, what, where was the confusion about this Article 86, Clause 3? Because we've had it for a long time, for so many years, and the previous administrations were able to comply to this. You know, why was it so strange in 2016 that the, the, the we failed really to understand? We it's, had different, you know, press briefings, people interpreting the, in, in a different way, this, they bringing their own. Why were the lawyers so confused in 2016? What they, happened? They, they were not confused, the innocent. Mm. The lawyers defined it very clearly. Mm. Very clearly. They educated them. Mm. They didn't want to listen. And even MPs, they knew very well that this is wrong. But they felt if it's the president has told us and we can make... They're very greedy. They're very greedy with money. You know? They're very greedy. And that's why we have so much money going through the drench of corruption in this country. Leaders have no respect for law. And you cannot run such a huge country without laws. Laws are there to guide you. They are there to make you achieve results that are good for the country, that are good for the citizens. So really, they knew very well. And they never thought anybody would sue them. Never. They didn't think so. No? It's their mentality. Look at how they wanted even to destroy the whole country through butane. Huh? They, they think they can always get away with everything. That's not the way you do. I mean, if I know that you, maybe you, you, you like chicken, and so I put poison in chicken. I said, eat. Even when it's chicken, you're going to die. Then you come when you refuse to eat that chicken because I was poisoned. Then I come and said, ah, he refused to eat chicken. I had put spices. He's a fool. He, look, we wanted to do this for women. I mean, honestly, that kind of cheap thinking puzzles me from people who are mandated to lead the country. You know? The levels that this country of leadership are are too low and embarrassing to the country. And we need to, 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 to lift you know, the leadership code. We need to lift it. We need people who, when we see their leaders, they stand for the truth. They are there to defend the Constitution. They are there to make sure that everything is done fairly well. You know? And this is where we have a problem. And the people we're talking about here, Honorable, these are veteran politicians. Yeah. You know, old leaders that have been there before maybe some of us were born. We can talk about the Alexander Shikwanda. You know, we talk about the Hari Kalaba, you talk about the Chishimba Kamwil of those days in government. You, you, you mentioned them. There's Richard Siamune, former defense minister, there are a number of them. Does it mean that all these old leaders or politicians were unable to understand or to comprehend what the law stipulated? It was greediness for money. They knew what the law stipulated. Clearly, they knew. But it was, oh, by the way, I'll get money, let me get money. That's what greedness leads you to. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be greed in the, when, you're, when you're a leader. It's just greedness. They were used to getting money free like that, which they have not worked for. Why should they complain now like babies? Why are they complaining when they knew they were warned? If maybe they were not warned, the law was clearly interpreted. So really, I think it's, it's very bad. It's a very bad example to the country, and that's what I'm trying to say. Even these who are breaking the law, we have many of them. Governments come and go. Time will come when you are given a duty by the Zambian people to do a certain type of job. Do it well and respect the law. If you break the law, everyone is seeing, someday you are going to answer. A case does not finish. A case does not finish. Law will follow you and... You be you should you 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 be held accountable alone. These people who are being used to temper with people who are innocent, someday they will have to answer. Judgment it does come. So these are lessons that we are teaching to young men to say, no, I've just been told. You know, I, I see that uh, 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 even with policemen, sometimes they will say, oh, bomb and yeah, kamba. You follow the lamu that is correct. You don't follow something that is wrong. You follow what is right. You can't say I've just been told by the top person. Even when what you know what he has told you is against what is correct. You shouldn't do that. You have a right to refuse. You have a right to resign morally. Right. Yeah.
if, if you ask me, Honorable, in an honest way, and uh, maybe a few Zambians, you know, watching us, and uh, they could be on my side, they could be having the same submission that I have. Why? Maybe it could be possible for us to pass a vote of no confidence in you, our lawmakers, our parliamentarians, because I feel that maybe you, 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 you've done more harm to this country. Because these are the laws, we, we're talking about the laws that you made yourselves. How do you compile or do debate on the laws that you are failing to understand I think you should by be, the end of the day? You should be specific. Maybe you are let down. The PF government. I, I'm, I belong to the opposition. Mm. You should say the PF MPs, the PF government. Mm. These are the ones who have no respect for the law at every level. Mm. They have no respect. No respect to human rights. Mm. They are the creators of violence. We've seen things we've never seen in this country. They simply don't because care. Because these laws are made collectively. They are made by both the ruling party as well as the opposition. Yeah, but the people you who know, broke them... So if you are going to make laws in the National Assembly, from there, maybe two years later, this group of individuals, they come out and begin to rape the Constitution. Really? Where are we? That's what I'm trying to say. Hmm. So the people that raped the Constitution hmm. are PFMPs and ministers. The ministers, actually. Some of them are MPs and both MPs that minister. They are the ones who broke the law, deliberately. Mm. Yeah. Including the president. Mm. It doesn't mean when somebody is a president, I can't say this is not right, this is wrong. You have that right to say so. So if you are not comfortable, resign morally. And that's leadership. Mm. That's leadership. A president has, has been said, and are you being one of the members of parliament, what really um, advice would you give maybe to the, 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 the young people that are aspiring to become MPs? It's very would... important to respect law. It does not mean that the president, whatever he says, is correct. Mm. Everything that is said must be defined within the boundaries of law. You must do things within the boundaries. Of... And when you are leaders, you must be exemplary. Mm. This is embarrassing. It's embarrassing to the country. Embarrassing to everybody. You must be exemplary to the people you are reading. You have a moral obligation. Mm. You have sworn in to follow the laws of the country. And then you break them, even when you have been warned and taught, simply because of your appetite for money. That's not fair. It's very embarrassing, actually. And that's what I'm trying to say. Levels of leadership have really gone down here. Really gone down. You know, Everybody's wondering what kind of leaders do we have. See? So this is very embarrassing. The president it, is yeah. a lawyer. We, we've got a president who is a lawyer by profession. No doubt about it, he's here with a lawyer. You know, and um, for him, he had his own understanding, different understanding, not only him alone, but other legal professionals. What does this put the law of profession in Zambia? I mean, it's the, same, know, it's the same thing we're talking about on... I, I remember, on, on, let, on, let, on, let me on, connect to yes. this. I remember Honorable uh, uh, Mumbi Pira, at some point, she was on a radio station, and uh, she did mention that, you know, if this country, uh, this COVID-19 we're in now, if it was being managed by the lawyers, I'm sure the country is going to be on fire. Because the lawyers we have in this country, they seem to be so confused. They don't know what they're doing. No, but the you know. Law Association of Zambia, which is a group of lawyers, hmm. put it very clearly. You are not supposed to continue eh? hmm. working. That lawyers took a stance right. very clearly. And if you're not going to, to respect the stance by laws, which law then are you talking about? Mm. Yeah. And I'm sure even maybe the attorney general should have told them quietly. The one who's disappointing is the attorney general. The attorney general should have resigned. Because he's the one who advises the government. And what advice did he give to the government? In a normal, correct, democratic dispensation, he should have resigned. Even those who were in the forefront saying that this is right, they should have resigned on moral grounds. But people have no shame here. They have no shame. And that's their president. Yeah, yeah. They have no shame. Even others. Mm. You know? They should have resigned. But they wouldn't. Even the president here, because I think he was the main man that stood you know, at the helm of this debate and uh, gave a guide on what was supposed to be done. In fact, you when know, we are the and president... And this judgment is not mentioned anyway. Even when you are the There's president, no punishment with that. Yeah, when you are a president, you, you should know. actually be the one who is number one in following the laws of the country. Mm. That's what you do. Not to be in the forefront of breaking the laws. 
then hell breaks loose in the country. Everybody will be breaking the law then. Mm. So it's a sad, really, it's a sad scenario. And that's sometimes to say now, there are a lot of people who think they are above law. And it's the same thing I'm telling ECZ. Mm -hmm. When you are given a mandate to save the Zambian people, save them correctly. Don't just say the boss said this, even when you know it's wrong, you go ahead with it, you'll be held accountable someday. Mm -hmm. You'll be held accountable. It doesn't matter how long it takes. Someday you'll be held to account for your actions. You seem to be yearning to talk about uh, ECZ and, uh, you know, you, you, you insist that ECZ is not following the law. Yeah, well, you see, look, you know, the register is supposed to be... from there, yeah. the water registration. Yeah, it, Why they, are you so upset as a member of parliament? No, you see, and, they don't have, according, I'm a lawmaker, mm. okay? Yeah. We have the electoral law, which does not give them any powers mm. to delete the whole reg register. And that they did. That is illegal. The electoral law only allows them to delete one candidate or two, three, individually, not the whole register. And the vote registration is supposed to be a continuous process. They have not done so. They are trying to differentiate Zambians. Most of the decisions should be made by all the stakeholders. You saw what happened when they had called a, a, a few presidents there. They were just told. There was nothing like an agreement. Few people talked. He says they just said what they wanted to. It's just dictating because they are being told by PF to do so. But someday they will be held accountable. Mm -hmm. These people who are given a job, read the results correctly, you read them wrong, and you are all over on WhatsApp, someday they will be held to why, account. Why do you feel that uh, the commission is being instructed or being led by the party front? I have Where talked does to, the PF come I have, in? I've talked to them, even Shindam, I've talked to them. Mm. They have no mind of their own. They have to wait for PF to and tell them. And they have confirmed them. to you yeah. that they are being led by no, the PF. You can see. You can see. We don't need to speculate. No, you can see. Mm. Yeah, you can see. You can see. We, we can't see anything here. So look, look now. Let's talk well, about... What, uh, let's talk I about... Le, 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 where they have broken the law. Yeah. I have said you know. voter registration is supposed to be continuous. Mm. They have stopped. That's the franchising people. Mm. They don't have a right to delete the, re the whole register. Mm. They have done so. Thirdly, they are now registering prisoners. They are getting prisoners NRCs without their parents, without any documentation of proof of when they were born. They are in the forefront, and yet there is no provision for them to do that. The court simply said these people have got a right, but there is a process to achieve that right. What process? You take a bill to parliament. They, 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 we have our elections here, this is it. It's governed by electoral law of Zambia. Which they fall, they fall. They should not go beyond. There was a bill taken to parliament that it became law. Which means Zambians agreed how they want ECZ to run the electoral affairs of the country. Because they are doing it on behalf of Zambians. So when they realize, okay, fine, these prisoners are supposed to, to vote. What they should have done is to take a bill to parliament where people, citizens, lawyers would submit how they want prisoners to vote. How a politician would go and campaign in prison, how everything, the whole process, all the questions would be as answered by that bill. Then you have a legal provision. Then they would have gone ahead to say, let them vote now, because there's a legal provision. But in the current electoral process, there is no provision for prisoners to vote, but it is that is in the forefront. They are the ones now even carrying camera, taking NRC people, removing them, even when they had said they would not remove them from the administrative offices. They are now removing them, taking them to prison, just take people. No parents, they don't care about, even some foreigners are there. ECZ now has lost, and people have lost respect on ECZ. Look at what's happened in Wapula. So the idea of the court does not make laws innocent. It interprets. It does not make the law. It simply said prisoners, yes, have a right to vote. But how they should vote, that should be supported by law. You are supported by law as you go to vote. So you have that right which you are given legally. And that's why I've said the electoral law process does not have any provision for prisoners to vote as of now. Now, because PFR are lazy and they are using this as a legal 
rig, rigging machinery, strategy. They are so much in a hurry. Why didn't they take the bill? After all, they are ones in the government. Why didn't they take a bill to parliament? Why are they in a hurry? When you are jailed, they don't get any NRC from you. You just dumped there. And when now they register, so, so if you ask me now, I don't know how I'm going to campaign in prison in Kalomu. First of all, the prison is governed by very secretive laws. They wouldn't even allow me to go and count the number of people there. How shall we know the number of prisoners in the country? That's a secret. You don't even know. And that's the way they run, the prisons. So I go there, I want to campaign. How? They're going to tell me I'm not allowed to go in there. Which law? If I proceed and go ahead and beat in prison, which law will protect me? What, what was I doing there? And how about those who come out of prison? Where will they vote from? If you're from Kasama and arrested here in Osaka, you come out of prison, go to Kasama, you don't... So there are a lot of questions that Zambians are asking. And those questions would have been answered by taking a bill to the government and the, the parliament, and the parliament makes those laws submitted by the Zambians. Because what happens is that, you see, when a bill is made, people are called, witnesses are called, lawyers, organizations are called, even citizens are free. There is a day when they say every citizen who feels like submitting to a committee is free to do so. And then the committee reads a report. This is what Zambians want. This organization, this is what they said. This group of people said this. Large, this is what they said. Individuals, professors also, this is what they said. Then you gather to say, oh, you agree, this is what Zambians want. The commission has insisted that um, it did engage other stakeholders, how? such as political parties. When they said it's PF, you know, to, to, it's PF. To make a roadmap on how That they, meeting that was there, innocent. Uh, the prisoners are going to vote. Yeah? No. No. Right. No. That was part of the rigging scheme. And that's why they are so much in a hurry. You know, when you, want, when you have to know good, you don't follow procedure. You don't follow procedure. You don't follow procedure. And that's typical of PF. It's the same thing with the loans. It was clearly Zambians, when they made that draft constitution, they said they wanted parliamentarians to have a say in the loans that are taken in the country. Why did they say that? It's because, look now, we're all affected. Because of these huge loans, the country's in a junk status, the currency has no value, few are very expensive, electricity, all these whatever problems that we have had. But if these loans pass through members of parliament, some of them would have been rejected. There have been some loans that were taken that were not signed by Minister of Finance in this country. So these are some of the problems that we have here. And so you have a duty when you are given a mandate to work on behalf of the Zambians that you do it correctly. The country is bigger than the president. The country is bigger than every individual in this country. It is bigger than the Minister of Home Affairs. It is bigger than everybody else. How is the rigging done? I, I've kept on asking this question to a number of guests that comes here just to get you know, lectured on how the rigging is done because these are the allegations we've had for a long time now. You know, most people, those from the opposition that we insisted to say the PF wants to rig the election, the PF rigged the election in 2016, the PF rigged the elections in 2015, and the likes, including the, when the MMD was in power, the Patriotic Front accused the MMD of having rigged the votes in the previous election that they had. You, you, know, you yeah. How is the rigging done? This is what happens, innocent. Hmm. You don't only look at what is happening the day of voting. Right. It starts from voter registration. NRCs, what happens there must be accounted for. Up to the time of what? Voting. The whole process. It's like human life. Nine months in the tummy, life begins. It's a process. So you cannot only take into account what happens on the voting day. That is also included, but it starts from there. The PF now have realized they have not worked, they are no longer popular, and they want to disfranchise Zambians. I have people in Kalomo right now from farms that have been there at the Boma to get NRCs for the past, for the past five days, 
I have had 70. None of them has gotten an NRC. Honorable Singombe has had 100 up to today. They are sleeping in one chihuahua. Yesterday, the NRC people went to take prisoners, and today, people are waiting there, staying hungry. Every phone, if I switch on my phone now, you will hear people are phoning, what are we going to eat? So, and then, they, that's why now they cancelled the old register to disfranchise so many Zambians. They bring in machines which will take roughly 15 minutes, one individual. Why should I stand in a normal country where the economy is working? for 11 hours, simply to get a voter's card. How can I vote for such a person? PF is making me queue on a line for sometimes 15 hours, simply to get a voter's card. How do they think I can vote for them? Ever since I was born, getting an RRC has not been an issue. Governments have come and gone. It has not been an issue. Every Zambian would have an NRC, but there comes this government that wants to stop people from getting NRCs. We hear a lot of stories now in Wapula, Congolese, what recordings, kids, what have you. Very embarrassing we're, to the country. We are getting there. Let's eh? to dwell on the, the commission and uh, how the commission rig elections. I think that's very cardinal and critical for people to understand or to get lectured by you. You know, and the commission has been there for, I don't know, so many decades now. Yeah, you see, you know, the, 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 the system. why do we keep on hearing these uh -huh. issues or allegations of rigging votes? And uh, yet, when this political party forms government, what they, they fail to work on the rigging system to change it. The, 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 the problem well, if, what goes wrong? Then? If you allow me mm. to use a, a word that mm. Zambia's feel is an insult, as, in, as an insult, but it's not an insult, it mm. simply says nonsense. The way the ECZ are selected is stupid. Doesn't make sense. Mm. I'm a player in the football pitch. I'm the same one choosing the referee. The president is a player in the election. He's the one who chooses the electoral commission commissioners. Mm. So they are all to him. That is where the mistake is. These are supposed to be chosen by independent bodies, mm. not the president. And none of you has pushed, uh, pushed in a motion in the parliament to make, you know, amendments. To, no, to you can't effect. just change that. It, it has to take the whole constitution to change it. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. none of you has been magnanimous enough to stand up and propose that. The government has got from arrogance point, of... From 1964 you know, the, about the, the, gov the government has got arrogance of numbers. Mm. Yeah. So even, even when it comes to the budget, we have never changed it as UPND mm. because they've got a majority. Only when they want to change the constitution where they need two-thirds. Mm. That's where they get stuck. There we come in. But simple majority, they, it goes through. Mm. So they've got an organs of numbers. So even if we push in something, it won't go through. Because mm. they've got that, the, more numbers in terms of uh, MPs. So basically, but I'm saying, this is where it is wrong. This is where we first we need to, to correct it. You can't have the same person who's taking part in the election, choosing the, the referees. You are also going to play football. You are the one choosing the referees or the whatever, match commissioners. You choose them. Then they become raw to you. Naturally. And that's where the problem is. That's where the problem is, yes. Naturally. Mm. So now the ECZ, instead of being raw to the Zambians, because what the money that ECZ is being paid comes from your tax, my tax, his tax. It doesn't come from PF alone, no. It doesn't come from the president alone. No, it doesn't come from minister. It comes from all the Zambians who pay tax. But what do we see now? They choose to be royal to one individual. And the problem is also uh, uh, the, the, the terms of rules of engagement are also bad. The president has so much power. He can get them fired. So how do you disobey somebody who can fire you? And these are the problems that are there. So even the whole setup is totally wrong. And you know, the Zambians we have these days, your, your type now, this generation, most of them are not principled. If those who were fighting for colonial, uh, for independence, were not as principled as they were, Zambia would have not gotten independence. If they were as corrupt as the current leadership, we wouldn't have gotten independence. 
And this is why they thought they would win Buten because with them, money buys everything. Money can buy anything, but it can't buy everything. It can't. So they were shocked when they lost Buten with all the dangling carrots they had. They couldn't believe it. And I warned them, I told them, whether you bring Bank of Zambia, I'm not going to vote for Buten. Because I can't do anything. That is totally against my country, my children, citizens, my friends. No. Life is not all about money. You know? It's about doing something that is upright. You know? I want to, I'm a proud Zambian. And when a Zambian achieves something, I'm very happy. It doesn't matter where Zambian was. So I just know this is Zambian. I'm proud of having Zambians who achieve now. How do I sell the country? And for them, all they thought, we've got the money. We can buy everybody. And they were shocked. They were shocked. They can't believe it up to now. And now they come, they say, no, we wanted to, to improve the welfare of the youth. We have 65% of the youth in the country. The budget was 119 billion. How much have they given the youth? Less than 1 billion. And the Minister of Sport. Then you claim that, you know, only Buten can sell. If you love the youth, give them 65% of your budget. But they are given nothing. And the youth are quite equally. They are given right, nothing in the wealth of the country. It's very difficult to be youth in this country. The youth are really suffering, and they don't know their strength. Our youth here are disorganized. Even when you come politically here, you have what is called cadres. That's rubbish. If you look at South Africa, for instance, the youth league is very strong. When you are a leader, you cannot ignore the youth. And the youth produce leaders. When Mandela went to prison, he was a youth league chairman. And when he came out, he was president of the country. Malema, which everybody knows, was simply a youth league chairman of ANC. And now the whole continent knows him. So it means the youth there are well organized. They know what to fight for, not where youth are used to just drink chivuk, throw stones, panga people. And yet where the cake is, they have nothing. And so these are some, and then they come to say, no, we wanted to promote the welfare of you women. But how about those eight members of parliament that the president is given to appoint? Why can't he appoint only women? They want to talk about the handicapped. He's got eight people to appoint. Which handicapped people did he, did, did he appoint? So all this is to blindfold the country and wake them, you know, take the country. I don't know how much, what wrong this country has done to this leadership. I don't know what, how much damage they want to do to this country. They have done so much damage. They have no remorse, no shame. We are laughing stock. We defaulted. It's, it's now embarrassing to be Zambian outside the country. But even when they have done so, they still want to be in power. That puzzles me. You want to be, continue being in power to continue destroying the country. This country is gone. You can't have a government that is there to defend people who are stealing from the government. You come for attenders, no one is arrested. Financial intelligence comes, money that will spend 6.1 billion, no one is arrested. You can't run a country like that. Honorable, after lamenting for, of course, uh, quite you know, uh, some time, are you able to give us uh, the update in terms of how the voter registration is going on in your area? I, I know if just a few days ago you did come out very strongly where you lamented, uh, also including the acquisition of NRCs and the likes. It's, it's, you it's, know. it's bad innocent. You feel bad. Mm. Sometimes you wonder, is this really my country where we are, we are treated like this? Okay, let, let me talk about voter registration before mm, sure, NRC. Because sure. Home Affairs Ministry can't run anything. It's totally chaotic. Home Affairs Ministry, we had people being gassed. How many people have been arrested? Let, let's start with the voter yeah, registration. Yeah, yeah, so let's come to voter registration yeah. now. Uh, first, when they started, they had said they would do, be at each polling session for 30 days. Suddenly, from nowhere, they changed they would be only be for seven days. Only, sir, seven days. And Kalomo has two districts. I mean, has two constituencies, Dundumwez and Kalomo Center. We only had 23 machines, which meant we shared. And how many polling stations? Over 100. Okay? Over 100 polling stations. 
So it meant now some machines were in Dundumwez, some in Karomo Center. And they employed one individual to man that machine, one only, deliberately. So the first day we had at Masa Empera, it broke. The printer broke. The whole day they never worked. People were waiting. The car had to come from Kalomo town, which was about 80 kilometers to where the police station was. Then the gen set, Kasikiri, did not work. Now, Momba polling station, for three days, the machine was broken down. Green Acres, the machine was broken down. They have to ferry it all the way to Lusaka. Kalonda polling station, the man who was there had chicken pox, got ill. He was the only individual. It stopped. The policeman who was there in Dundumwezi committed suicide, died in a toilet. And so, you're seeing what, what I'm telling you now. Two days I'm talking in Dimwe. The printer got jammed the whole day. They didn't do. And you're talking of seven days, That's three true. days gone. Okay. And we ask them, can you extend? They are still waiting for their boss to tell them. They cannot give you that answer. They are still waiting. You ask the vice president, can't give you that answer. They are targeted to meet, to get nine, nine million. How many have they gotten? Very few. In my constituents, I've not reached where even the number of voters that voted in the last elections. Four and a half years ago. The numbers are, numbers don't lie. Then they come to NRCs. NRCs, they would be, be, go... Before uh, that, uh, the, the vice president, really, you've talked about... I mean, she's your mother and uh, a friend of yours in the house, you know, leader of uh, business in the house, really. And uh, is she aware about all these things? Because... We, we need to. Uh, yeah, I, I we, asked we, her myself. We've had, you know, been given different updates coming from her. And um, when she's speaking, really... You do get convinced, okay, I think things are okay on the No, ground. no, no. We, 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 we have asked And sometimes, you know, I think we, we, we tend to be naive. I want to believe that maybe it is out of some of you from the opposition because um, I don't know if you just want to oppose everything that the government does. Look, you don't see any good side innocent, of the government. Innocent. We you asked. Know, we so asked, you want just to alarm things. No, no. We asked Norway. very seriously. Sure. Are you going to default? Hmm. We asked her. We want an answer. Mm. She said, we want default. You are rest assured. The following day, Zambia defaulted. Mm. She was asked to say, mobile registration, they are needed in Western province. She assured them they would go. The Home Affairs Minister comes, they can't go. But now they are going to prison. Western province got the lowest in voter NRC the, 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 the issuance. Very few. It was a failed project. And the MPs came and gave a report. We want the facts were there in terms of figures. Let them go. The Minister of Home Affairs refused. What kind of a government is that? And then the following day, they are busy going to prisons, mobile. I had in my own constituents two words that were not done. And the Minister of Home Affairs comes to Kalomu in the evening, never called me, never wrote a letter to my office because I have no time to communicate. He goes, comes in the night. Then he goes to parliament and says, I didn't receive him. Am I a witch doctor? How do I receive somebody I don't know is going to come? Surely. He never communicated. Nine shot, not even an SMS. Not even WhatsApp. And he expected me to be there. Come on. Mm. Come and on. these are your colleagues. I mean, Pardon? you know. That's what I'm trying to do. Data is there everywhere. What Data is there. What kind of relationship do you have with, uh, uh, in parliament? It's not about there? relationship when you're doing official mm. job. Right. Yeah. When you are doing an official job, it doesn't matter who is there. Mm. It's about the title. Here it's not about me. It's about being an MP. My title, I'm an, a member of parliament. Mm. Once I leave this, I'm no longer going to be honorable. So the mere fact that there's a member of parliament there, if he wanted to see me, he should have communicated. They never communicate. Mm. The president of this country has come to my constituents twice. One time in Katundu, one time at Mumba. Not very far from my area. No invitation. No communication. And then they go, they ask, where is the MP? It's not that fair. Is it's because even when you are invited, uh, we, we no, 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 no. When we were open, when, when no. Minister of Energy, Nkua, Honai Bonkua, mm. came to Nachikunga, I was there. He had not invited me, but I heard. People told me, tomorrow there will be officials. I asked him. So I'm going to, but you have not told me. Mm. That's why I said I'm coming. And I went there. There was Minister of uh, what? 
religious affairs in Siachitema Mission, when we were fish open, I was seated next to her. There were four students from Mukwela who were hit by lightning. I'm the one who, involved, who informed the disaster management, and I was told, you know, we're sending a message. I said, I will receive her. Ask on a body papiri. I received her in Mukwela. We were seated next. Yeah, sure. I, we sit I, together I, I, in Parliament. I saw yeah. that. So, so, I saw that. there must be some you kind know. of communication. But I've been told that um, there is a, a very strong instruction from your party leader, you know, Mr. Hakende Hichilema, that he's instructed all of you that never mingle with those that are in power. Don't we mingle at Parliament. You know. Don't and that's why them. maybe when they are coming to maybe to your constituencies, Government is unable to invite some of but you how, how because maybe we, they want to save your jobs. How do we work in you know, parliament? They feel that you might be expelled. Along how the way. do we? How do we work in parliament? I've come here mm. with PF uh, 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 ministers. Mm. I was with Kafwe at Prime TV. Mm. Was I reprimanded? I've come here. There was one time in the morning. There was this MP for Kabwe. Mm. We meet. We meet with them in. in we, we work with them in, in committee meetings. Mm. PF MPs. So which instructions that today? You know, which instruction? They want to hide their disorganization. You can't come to my constituency. You are not communicating to an MP. Who huh? mm -hmm. came to Kalom over these analysis around between 1819? Went to see the DC. Never communicated to me. How do I know? And then he goes to Parliament. And I'm not given an opportunity to actually defend myself because once he speaks, I can't answer in that format. And he has said it twice, which I find very strange and very people, they're not sincere in their dealings. They're not sincere. That's not the way you run the government. Mm. The government, you communicate effectively. If you can't, you are running a government and can't communicate if effectively, you can't. I've never heard HH talking about us. He would have then stopped us from going to parliament. We go to these ministries to ask for this. We go. Mm. How do we get work done? If it doesn't rain, they will say it's HH. Banks are closed, they will tell you everything is HH. We've gotten used now. Mm. We've gotten used. You know? And how many people really were, in terms of percentage, were given the NRCs ah, very uh, few. under the mobile? Very NRC? few. Very few. Uh, we were told mobile NRC they would work throughout the weekend. They were not working in my area. There was one girl from Mazabuka. She was simply bad. A typical kada. Katun do the whole money the whole day. Maybe 10 hours. What, what do you mean when you say typical kada? What, I mean, she was not professional was because, you see, she was not professional. She was rude. Mm. First, they went to Katundu. She was very rude. I had to go there mm. to talk to her. Change a little bit, I leave. The same thing. How do you the whole day, 10, ten analysis only? Over the holiday, they were just seated. They would just sit. And then when they would come, no, materials are not there, papers are finished. Nothing was going on. Nothing. They were instructed to make sure we defranchise them. That has been their game plan. Extremely overdone. Extremely overdone. You can't have such a government. We have never explained that from 1964. This is something else. So if you ask me now, there was nothing being done. Why do we have multitudes of people now in these centers to get the NRC? Mm. The voter registration comes to an end. Uh, uh, should be on Saturday this week, on the 12th of December. If you are given a chance to meet um, either Patrick Chindano, the ECZ chief electoral officer, as well as maybe Justice Chulu himself, what advice would you give to them? Someday they will be held accountable. They should follow the law of the country. They shouldn't think they're above the law because then they, they can talk directly. I don't want to represent or whatever. They shouldn't think they're above the law. Someday they will be held accountable. They will answer in their individual capacity because the taxpayer money that comes from poor Zambians that they get, they're supposed to deliver according to what the requirements of the law. They should be fair. And they shouldn't bring troubles into the country. They shouldn't. Their activities have annoyed, I've never seen Zambians being annoyed as they are now. 
Maybe I'm the only one who sees that. I, I talked, to, I phoned Shindam. Mm. To me, he sounded like a person who can make a decision. You spoken to him. I spoke to him when it just began. I, he couldn't, he just said, you talk to him or just allow us to work. If I stopped him to work, I was asking him how the hell he would get nine million from the way the machines were slow. Why should I go zero one to go and just get a voter's card, honestly? Huh? In the working column, people are busy producing things. You can't keep them for 10 hours for just a voter's registration, I mean, voter's card. In Rwanda, you can clear a car in one hour. You can form a company in one hour. Here, to get a voter's card, you need 10 hours. What a country. And all that brought in by PF. They shouldn't take Zambians for granted. And these will be punished. Zambians will punish them through a vote. You know, I've, I, 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 there's somebody who posted a voter's card. He said, armed and dangerous with the voter's card. You should hear the comments after people spend 10 hours and then they have that card, what they wish to do. When you see somebody standing on a queue for 10 hours, he's after removing someone. He means business. And they thought Zambia does not mean business, but they mean business. These are going come 2021. There is no government that has stayed forever. Leadership is like going into a toilet. Once you go into a toilet, the next thing is to come out. So once you go into leadership, the next day you're out. I'll be out someday. You leave others to continue. So you can't think that you are going to be in leadership permanently. You, you, you want to manipulate the law to allow you to sit. You want to adjust this. Go third term. What, what, what kind of, honestly? Arguing on things that are very obvious. We're in the nine minutes of um, the year 2020, of course, where a lot of things have happened, you know, politically. You can also talk about the economy. You just did mention that uh, as a country, again, we did fail to uh, pay our debt. So many things have happened. How would you uh, describe the year 2020? It has really been very bad. First of all, at constituents level, mm. the president, this PF government, mm was very unkind. In terms of? Uh, my farmers were given three bags of fertilizer. They could only buy three. Fertilizer, the price went up to 550. Other areas, they were getting eight pockets, six pockets. We told them the PF government refused. How do they expect these farmers to vote for them? Now we have a budget, innocent. I want just in less than one minute. Sure. We have a budget of 119 billion. And this government can only raise from tax about 41 billion. So you have a graph of about 80 billion, okay, to the nearest. And then the wage bill for civil servants, 74 billion. So if you can only raise 40 billion, where will you get even 34 billion to pay the civil servants? Forget that you, you don't have any loans. The Zambian government will have to borrow to pay loans. That was their plan. Go and borrow again to clear another loan. And now they're in a junk status, no one can lend them money. They are stuck. They had asked to say that bond they be forgiven for six months right after elections. Things would seem normal now when they are not normal. In this budget, the Zambian government will have to borrow to pay civil servants. They will have to borrow to pay another loan. And meanwhile, they have been told they can't borrow. Then secondly, they have overborrowed internally in all the banks here. They have overborrowed. That's why the interest rates are very high here. Because the demand for money is high because the government is just taking blindly. And they are failing to pay the principal. They are only paying interest to our domestic banks, which comes to about two, 18 billion. Maybe now 20 billion the way the quarter has lost value. Then you come to external debt. They are supposed to pay it off for about 30 billion. Where will they get the money? They don't have the money to pay loans. They have killed the domestic lending institutions. And then the civil service now is going to die because they won't be paid. They may not have even money to run exams. And so right now in the country, there is no money. 
And we were telling them, you can't milk a cow you have not fed. In an economy, innocent, you need to have money to spend for an economy to tick. If you and me, him, don't have money, who is going to buy what people are selling? Who is going to buy the bicycles, the cars they are selling? Nobody. So there's a stance too then. It's, 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 it's a circle, the way the economy runs. People must have money to spend. If your salary, not very long ago, was, was 20000 maybe that was about 3000 USA dollars. But now, it's less than 1000 USA dollar. Because the currency has lost value. No medicine in the hospitals. Ministry of Health, so much corruption has happened. Auto General's report, very scary. No one is getting arrested for as long as they are well connected. People flash money for as long as they are well connected. You can't run a country like that. And then you wonder now why we have load shedding. They got these loans, they got loan that went to railways, Zambia Railways. 360 million. Where did that money go? Nothing. Not even a poster to say, this is Shankombo now. Nothing. Just disappeared like that. Zesco, they got a loan. The part that is making a lot of money now in Zesco, who is running it? The generation part. Go and find out. You are a generalist. Who is running Zesco? The generation part, which is making money. And where there is no money, where there is expenditure, who is running it? Go and find out. You are a generalist. Why information have you gathered from no, I, I want you to find, because you should be concerned. Because you can share with us. Yeah, you should be concerned. I have just something to say. Hmm. Just go to Zesco and ask to say who is running the hmm. generation part of Zesco. And of course, we are privileged. We, we have you, maybe you can able to... No, I want you to find out, Innocent. Forms. I've given you homework. Yeah. I've given you homework. Right. Look at them in ZNBC. Mm. Top star, 60% is owned by the Chinese. Mm. People are paying to top stars. Workers are not being paid. All the money is going outside the country. Mm. So the Chinese now eventually are going to grab a lot of properties because we're unable to pay the loans. The Chinese will not be that kind, my dear. Mm. You don't take away things from them, you have to pay back. The COVID-19 as well in 2020 uh, brought the, the economy to a standstill. You know, the political activities again were affected. You, most of you were able to, you know, to mobilize your, 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 your part activities. You know, I, I remember when we began the, the UPNG as well as the Patriotic Front and the other political parties, of course, they had embarked on the, you know, intra-party elections, which were put on hold at some point due to the COVID-19. Yeah. How do you hope to soldier on next year? I wouldn't want really to blame, really, uh, innocent mm. COVID. This COVID-19 is, is really a lame excuse. Right. It's a lame. Actually, it brought more money, which again was stolen mm. in this COVID, and the money was stolen. I mean, the whole my the whole of my province, southern province, mm. there was only one machine. I was tested twice for COVID. The results never came. Never. I went to my hospital when they were doing a parliament. I went to my hospital. I said, no, let me go and with my people. Mm. I was honored by them. They were calling me honorable. The results never came. I did again. The results never came. Because there was only one machine. And they wouldn't manage to pay the worker who was there. So it would knock up 17 hours. So it was all. But you see, on the other hand, mm. the only thing that we benefited was that sure. the president reduced his movement. He was not moving like he normally does. So at least the country saved money. Because it's very expensive for the president to move. At that time, the president did not move. And all these who take government money to be treated outside the country. We were meeting at UTH. It was nice. We were meeting them at, you know, some, some lost a lot of weight. They wouldn't fly where they go. And I, I hope they learned a lesson that it's very important to have your own things. Because at that period, some, country, some uh, ministers in Africa died because they, they were refused entry. We have people here who even after three months or after two months, they have to fly abroad, they leave our hospitals to go and medically be checked. But they wouldn't move when COVID was real there. So you could see that some had lost weight. Some would have actually died. So, but I hope these are lessons that Zambians can learn, mm -hmm. that we need a health care system that benefits the Zambians. We need to be treated right in our country. When Mandela got sick, they never took him outside the country. The whole lot of Mandela. They treated him right in South Africa. Mm. So really for me, I don't really blame COVID too. In fact, we closed the schools, uh, we did the syllabus, what have you, and, 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 and you know, kids suffered. But above all, mm. 
we were not as if affected as other countries. Right. Yeah, I think God was really gracious on us because really, if it had hit like the way it hit in America, oh my God. Because mm. we still have people that can't afford to buy a mask. Yeah, so we, we were like really, we would like to thank God really. I wanted to, you to comment about the Public Order Act as well. Um, it's one contentious you know, uh, legislative, legislative we have in this country where most of you have you know, lamented that uh, you do not have space to campaign or to carry out your party activities because of the Public Order Act that we, we have. And Is yet there has been no serious attempts from the, 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 you in the opposition to ensure that we change the... Yeah. the, the the Public Order Act has been there from 1964. Sure. When there was Kaunda, we didn't have this kind of violence. Mm. MMD came, we didn't have this kind of violence. Mm. There was Mwanawasa, there was Rupia Banda, we didn't have this kind of violence. This violence came with PF. Mm. The Public Order Act simply asks you to notify the police, not mm. to get permission. You simply notify them. Mm. na meeting. That museum, not getting permission. You simply notify them. But the PF government comes deliberately mis decide to misinterpret the, 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 the But the court had even ruled at some point. Also the, 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 court, the, the, officers. the police will even tell you in such a cheat. How many police officers have been fired, retired on public interest? Huh? It's not actually in public interest, national interest, but it's in the interest of PF. Those who have tried to be principled professional, they have been fired. And that's what dictators do. First, they threaten you. Fire a few people. Then those who remain. They, civil servants are not free to do anything. Some have been fired on tribal lines. You know? Some that I know, you want to go and greet them, they run away from you as if they are seeing a ghost because they are afraid of losing their jobs. Fearing a lawmaker. Yeah, especially us who are coming from the opposition. Mm. We, we, we really, you know, go and see the feelings very bad about this government. And you don't do that because they are all your Zambians. You don't do that. Already now my farmers are getting three bucks. Their friends who are somewhere inside, they are getting six, eight. And people are able to communicate now on WhatsApp. And they didn't get to know these things. So really, I, I don't know. But uh, the Public Order Act has not really been a problem. The problem is PF. It believes in violence. The violence in they, they, they are a very violent party. They are a very violent party. They believe mm. in violence. And so, and they can twist facts that mm. are very straightforward. When you talk about uh, political mm. violence, really, it's difficult to heap that blame on one political party, which is the ruling party now, because others have still pointed get fingers at the UPND, saying it's another second violent political party in this country. You know, others have gone to the extent to say the UPND and the PF, they seem to be, to be having the same characteristics. Yeah, this is where the problem you know. also, you, you generalist, hmm. you must be very investigative. Hmm. You know, you must be very investigative. And uh, hmm. I, I become sad, really. Right. You know, when Lawrence Banda was short, in Kaoma. Mm. It was I'm human Lawrence. We were there in the evening mm. and they came, I think there were three, four. Sure. And then they asked me, we were there at the restaurant. Mm. Um, they asked me to say no uh, bias, you know, beer, which I did. Mm. The following morning I went to church, Catholic church there. Mm. And what happened? He was shot. Eight thirty. Shot in the head. The person who shot was known, seen. Up to today, he has never been arrested. My pension was shot up to now. He was never arrested. The person who shot him is known. Many people that have been shot. Eh? I could have been killed myself at Westwood Police Station when I was guarding Chinyanja Police Station. They came, two rosas came. I thought they are church people. I didn't know. And I must thank Honorable Machila. I was standing near Marand Cruiser by the third road, some small lay-by. I just saw the buses came. Me, I thought they were church, but they were all quiet. They came out with their hands in the pocket with the pangas. Kambita's car was badly damaged. Much is the one who came to say, you are under attack. These are PF cadres. Stones flew. People on the queue beaten up. 
Those who are guarding elections all ran away. <laughs> you can't call that an election. And then some people come say, it's UPND. It's, I, I, I find, you know, I, 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 I then begin to wonder. If I come, I want to harass you innocent. I begin now beating you. Surely, shouldn't you defend yourself? I just come to grab you and start beating you up for no reason. Maybe it could be in the same, you know, same vein where you were look, using look, that look. such terms. In, 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 in Pika. So others feel that, in you Pika, know, in Pika, the it's policeman. not about defending yourself but the for video, yourselves, but it's about innocent. fighting back. The, big, the, videos, it becomes the videos there in Pika, policemen guarding tired, mm. blocking HH with big tires. They've got guns. HH passes, passes through, throws a petrol bomb. They are watching, policemen are watching. Who is paying that policeman? It's my tax. It's everybody's. And then today you come, no. This is where the problem comes in. Mm. I had a person shot in Kalomo. Procedure was not followed. Those who were gassing, no one was arrested. Somebody who just walked by the filling station, shot. As we wind up, yeah. I'll give you perhaps uh, five minutes. I want us to um, no, squeeze in the, just two questions or so. Coming to next year, I know that the UPND, you know, you are working hard to ensure that you form a government next year, in 2021. How is the ground so far? Are you impressed in the way you are conducting your campaigns so far? I mean, look, we, we are stopped. Is the ground for you to form government next we, we, year? We, 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 we will certainly form government, there's no doubt about it. Right. Yeah. And we will change a lot of things What for gives better. you confidence? No, we will, we will. The PF have failed. Hmm. They can't continue any further. If PF was to come again in 2024, oh my God. Hmm. Oh my God. I wouldn't want to think about that. Hmm. Yeah, they've completely failed. I mean, <laughs> if you wrote an exam and you got zeros, then you still want to say, give me a certificate. What kind of a person are you? Hmm. You got zeros, you know, and you said, give me a certificate. The point I'm trying to say is the PF have literally failed. Hmm. They, we were telling them all these same things. They were going ahead. It's, 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 so it's up to the government. Within honestly. a minute, what five things or developmental plans or agenda would you want to, would you achieve? Let's say you are formed, you form government rather in 2021, within maybe a short period of time. What are the five developmental agenda would you quickly work on? Oh, there are many, there are many innocent. Mm. Uh, there are many. I mean, first of all, I mean, mm. you need the basics to achieve results. Mm. Separation of power, rule of law, mm. you know, so citizens are free, you know, uh, uh, education, health have to be looked into, agriculture, mm. shift, you know, also from our minerals, make sure that we're getting in something. But as I'm mentioning these innocent, I think um, we need to tell ECZ and PF they have to extend the voter registration. They have not met the targets. They should not take us for granted. Every Zambian has a right to vote. So they should extend. We want them to announce as soon as on the 12th. They should extend the voter registration so that people can register freely. Some people to get permission for 10 hours from work. They never registered, went back. And, you know, their work maybe is a medical doctor, is one treating people. So we want all the people, those that are willing to register to vote. And they must extend the vote registration period. It's a must. They have to. Right. Yeah, they have to. Fantastic. Honorable, allow me to once again appreciate you for coming this evening. I know that we are supposed to have this interview. That was uh, last week on a Saturday, if I remember very well. But I'm glad that each time we call you, you are able to No, thank, thank you very much, Innocent. Yeah. Thank you so much. This is my home. I feel at home here. Indeed. Yes, please. Right. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. Cheers. Cheers. Yes, sure. I hope you are COVID-free. <laughs> yeah, you never know. But, <laughs> we uh, are. Yeah, you never know. But, so, otherwise, we end our discussion here. My guest has been Honorable Harry Kamboni who is a Kalomo Central Member of Parliament. I was here, of course, highlighting a number of issues regarding how the United Party for National Development intends to, of course, uh, transform Zambia if uh, given the chance to form a government next year 
in 2021 and also the lessons behind the recent you know announced or pronounced concord judgment on the 63 former cabinet ministers who have been given a 30 days out matter in which they should be able to refund the national uh, 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 treasury the money that they illegally accrued in 2016. thank you so much my name is uh, innocent Piri ip on behalf of my of course, uh, camera person, Chris Topper, thank you very much. Ashby upstairs and the Trubbish, the fantastic, hardworking team. May God bless you. May God bless Zambia and God bless Mother Africa. Good night.